Number one is correct. Number two is is correct. And number three is correct. All day. Yes. I got you. Okay. Questions on one, two, or three? How? Kosi got it. Mason. Kosi, what'd you do? Okay, so I first was like, okay, what am I doing? Why am I in this class? Then I was like, oh, wait. I noticed something. I saw that X equals Y, you know, when you go like, you know what I'm saying? And then 2 equals 3, and then I just plug it in. Okay, all right. On number two, okay. Hold up, Jessica got this. She saw it. Okay. Yeah, so we had A over B, 7 over 3. So we said A minus B. So she said A was 7, B was 3. 7 minus 3 would give you 4. And so it would have to be over three. Does that, I mean, that was one way to look at it. Okay, another way to look at it is, okay, it says if this happens, then they want to know what would happen if I did this new rule, okay? So basically, if I had A over B, and basically it's saying minus B, whenever you subtract fractions, oops, I put that wrong, the denominator has to, same, has to stay the same. So... This would be A minus B on the top, and then the B is going to stay at the bottom. Does that make sense? All right, so if I look at this next one, 7, right, I would have to say 7 minus uh, our denominator because it's going to be 3. And 7 minus 3 would give you 4, so it would be 4 over 3. You can just plug it in, but if you want to look at the actual computation. All right, 3. Uh, anyone get four? <laughs> Not six x. <laughs> four. We're on number four. No, not six plus x over x. Okay, guys. All right. Look at this ratio, this proportion, and then look at the first ratio. What are they doing to the first ratio so it now, five-thirds now becomes a two-thirds? What did they do? They subtracted what? Three. three. Okay, so five-thirds minus three over three will give you two-thirds, right? They're subtracting by whatever the denominator is, right? And they're making it as one, three over three. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing to this ratio. If I had nine plus x over x, if I keep that same back pattern, I'm going to subtract what? No, not 3. X over X. There we go. Because we had 3 over 3. 3 was my denominator. Okay, so if I have 9 plus X minus X, yeah, 2 thirds would equal 9 over X. Okay, guys, when you subtract fractions, you do nothing to the denominator. You just subtract the numerator. When you add or subtract fractions, nothing changes to the denominator. The only thing you do is add or subtract the numerator. What is 9 plus x minus an x? Which is 9. All you're left with is 9, which is what I have now on the top. So it's just 9 over x. You do not subtract or add your denominators. You have to have a common denominator in order to add or subtract. Okay, so all you got to do is worry about the top. I'm going to simplify the top. Monday. Yep. All right, so number five. With that being said, with that in mind, if I have 5 minus x over x equals to 3 fifths, then 5 over x would equal what? Not. Not 3 over 5. Okay, so I'm asking to you, what are they doing to the first ratio? They added an X, right? Does that make sense? 
Yeah, because if I add an x, this will cancel out and leave me just 5. Yeah. If I had 5 minus x over x, and if I add x, the x's will cancel out, leaving me with just 5. Okay, so what am I going to have to do to the second ratio? Yes, add 5. So if I had 3 over 5 plus 5, so what would that give me? Yeah, 8 over 5. I'm just basically looking how the first ratio ch changed it to the second ratio to come up with the its common change, you know. I'm just, I'm doing it mentally, really. I'm seeing that this is 5 minus x, but now it's just 5, so I had to get rid of that x to make that a 5. Because this was minus x. Mm -mm. No, don't look at, yeah. You can do it that way too, but you have to actually cross multiply and solve it. Okay. All right, so the last one. Try it. Try the last one. Okay, what do we get? Yep, that's it. Five over four. Yep, that's five over four. Okay. All right, now. <coughs> <laughs> All right, what are you looking at, Charles? Oh, well, well, I see that it's an X, so I just got X. Yeah, from now on, now. Okay, so you saw it was a subtraction, right? Did you see that X is your denominator? Okay, so did you do the. So we had 9 over 4? So, since I had to subtract x over x, what am I going to have to subtract to this one? Yeah, 4 over 4. 9 minus 4 is 5. Mm -hmm. I do whatever, whatever's being added. It has to be the same as the denominator in order for me to add or subtract. These have to be the same. Right, this should be review. I'm hoping that 7 and 8 are review. What'd you get, uh, Jordan? Uh -huh. X equals 1. X equals 1, and then you had... Yeah, okay. All right, just cross multiply. All right, what I want to address real quick are 9 and 11. Um... Uh, your proportions or your solving proportions or using cross products to solve proportions will not be just uh, one monomial term proportion. You're going to have a binomial, meaning there will be two terms. So whenever you see two or more terms, get in the habit of putting that in parentheses because we're going to have to start showing the cross products and we're going to end up eventually getting to multiplying two binomials. So I know some of y'all are used to the butterfly method. I really don't care about that. I just care about seeing the cross products. So x plus 2 is getting multiplied to 6. So that is 6 parentheses x plus 2. 6 times x plus 2. Yes, you can simplify that. It's equal to 3 times x minus 1. I'm showing the cross products because if you have a proportion, the cross products are equal. Then you, yeah, you just distribute and, sub and simplify. So this would be 6x plus 12 equals 3x minus 3. And then we're just solving a regular two-step equation. So what is x here? Three. Yes, x is a negative 5. By two, yes, and do that. Yes, see. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I just said what Kosti said. Yes, yes. No. 
All right, so we want to cross multiply, show your cross products to get partial credit. So we got 12 times 5 minus t is equal to 13 times 3 plus t. And we want to distribute, okay, and solve for t. This will give you a fraction or decimal answer, okay? You will get, and I want you to be comfortable with that. Yes, 0.84 is the decimal answer. Anyone have the fraction? Half? Yes, 21 over 25 is the fraction answer. All right, so once you distribute, I'm assuming I'm going to do it all in one step. She adds the 12T, and then she subtracted 39. So that would leave you 21 equals 25t, and then you have to divide by 25 to get your fraction. Now, of the type of, when you divide by 25, they will cancel out. 25 can't go into 21. That is your reduced fraction. That's why I said it's either 21 over 25 or 0.84. Now, 13, go ahead and star 13 and 14. Uh, 13 and 14 are, when we, are how you would be assessed with proportions, solving proportions. You're going to have two binomials. You're going to get into having a multiplying binomial together, which is what you did in Algebra 2. All right, so when we do our cross product, 6 times 2. 12, and now I'm going to have to write x plus 1 parentheses times x plus 2. And last year in Algebra 1, you did the FOIL method or distribute method or box method. I've heard several different methods, but basically, take, just do like you would normally distribute. Take the first, multiply it to the first and to the term in the other uh, binomial. x times x would leave you with x squared. And then x times 2, because now I'm going to do the outer. That's going to give me 2x. Now I go to the next term. 1 times x is x. And then 1 times 2 is, is 2. I know it's 3. So, oh, yes. Yep. Okay, so what we have is a quadratic, but we want the quadratic simplified and we want it in standard form. I mean, we want it equal to 0. So. x squared plus 3x minus 10. There we go. Okay, so now that I have it in standard form, now I'm ready to factor. So I want factors of a negative 10 with the sum of 3. Yep, so we have x minus 5, no, plus 5, sorry, and x minus 2 because we had a positive 3. So the 5 has to be positive. 5 times 2 gives you, 5 times a negative 2 gives you negative 10, and 5 plus a negative 2 gives you 3. All right, so solving for x, we will now see that x is equal to negative 5 or positive 2. Okay. All right, 15, same type of premise. Or... Yeah, let's do 16. This is a homework problem. Try six. Let's do 16. All right. So on 16, same thing. We got two binomials that we're gonna multiply together. So 8 equals x plus 2 parentheses times x minus 5 parentheses. Again, you're gonna have to use your distribute or FOIL method or box method, whatever method. Get it into standard form. It's a quadratic. Okay, you should get this into standard form. 
So you should have 0 equals x squared minus 3x minus 18. Yes, and then when you do your factoring, your x value should be negative 3 or 6, or 6 and a negative 3. Okay. Yeah, yeah, 7 times x minus, minus, yeah, 7x minus 14, yeah, same thing. Okay, so what I want to kind of go over real quick, because some of this should be review, similar triangles or similar parts or figures you should kind of be familiar with. Um, I just kind of want to go over some things now. If it's a similar triangle or similar figure, the corresponding angles like R and K, would have to be congruent. All the corresponding angles would have to be congruent for it to be a similar triangle or similar figure. Now, in addition to the angles being congruent, the corresponding sides have to be proportional. So the part I think you should be familiar with whenever you see similar triangles, you need to use the corresponding sides. When they tell you they're similar, and in, in this first example, this symbol up here, I'm going to point to it, it kind of looks like a sidewards S. This symbol, that is the symbol for sim similar. Oops. All right, it's a symbol for similar. So they're not going to write that word out. They're just going to show you that symbol. Now, we're going to look at three ways to, sh to pretty much solve similar triangles. We're going to use what we know about corresponding parts or corresponding sides. So besides having the two figures separate, you could have what we call the ladder theorem. The ladder theorem is used whenever we have parallel lines cut by a transversal. Okay? And so if you ever have or see that type of figure, we're going to use the ladder theorem. And when you do that, you're going to use the sides or transversal. So I need you to write that down. For the latter theorem, you're going to use the sides or transversal. Also, you can not, you cannot use the parallel lines. Because that does not have a proportional relationship, only the sides do, okay? So, when I mean the sides, like if you look, you have a left side or the left transversal. It's already been cut into parts, A and B. So basically, this is one ratio, A over B, is going to equal to the right side or the right transversal, which is C over D. That's all you have to do to write your proportion, okay? A over B is equal to C over D. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. The parallel lines are not proportional. Okay. With the parallel lines? You, you, the only way you could do it, and I'll show you, is basically I would have to eventually bring in these transversals to create a triangle. And then I would have to separate those triangles to find those parallel parts. Okay, so these two theorems here, the ladder theorem and the triangle uh, angle bisector theorem are kind of similar in the sense that basically they're trying to show you that the transversal, if the transversal eventually intersects and I brought it together, I could create a triangle. But I still would have the side compared to the other side. So I'm still looking to the left side, like this is still going to be A over B is equal to C over D. You're still going to separate the parts, the sides. You could, you could say um, left to right, left to right, but you want, it's easier just to do A over B is to C over D. Compare left side to right side. All right, last thing, here's what you need to write down. There are three ways 
too soft. Okay. There's going to be three ways to solve when dealing with similar triangles. All right, the first way, one, whenever we're looking at this, we're going to look for whenever we have parallel lines, okay? These parallel lines are cut by two transversals that are oblique and eventually intersect, forming the, right, forming the triangles. The first way I could solve this is by, I'm going to write this down. You could separate, adjust that, please. You could separate the triangles, okay? You can separate the triangles and you can compare them big to small, or you could go small to big. Doesn't matter, but you need to separate them and compare them. Yeah. So, whenever you separate them, you have to redraw them. I want you to make sure you can see this relationship because I'm going to do this for y'all or with y'all, and I need to see that you can see it. I'll do it the green. Okay. Does everyone agree we see the small triangle here? All right. So, I'm just going to redraw that. I'm going to label it. We have A, a B, and C, and then we have the side C, the side B, and the side A. Okay. I'm gonna, so you need to redraw it. You need to get in a habit of redrawing and separate them and compare them. Because the second one we have, now I gotta go to the big triangle. So I'm not gonna redraw that. Okay, what is the name of the big triangle? Yeah, ADE. Here's the part I want to make sure you can see. I want the length of the side DA. That means I'm going from A all the way down to D, that whole side right there. Okay? What would be the length, or how could I find the length of that side? Not two times. Huh? No. I don't know yet. I'm trying to figure that out. I don't know if it's a two to one ratio. I want to go, f look, do you know how, how long AB is? Yeah, AB is C, right? How long is BD? Okay, so what would A to D be? Yeah, plus the C plus M. You're going to have to add the parts if you separate them. Okay? C plus M. All right, so... Yeah, A and E would be B plus K. And then D to E, we already see is labeled. That is H. Okay? So if you separate them, which you are going to be asked to do, you got to be able to recognize when you have to add the parts to find the new length. Now, whenever you separate them, you're not going to use proportions With the corresponding side. You are. Once you separate them, you're going to use proportions with the corresponding side. So, for example, C on the small triangle goes with C plus M on the big triangle. It is going to be equal to B on the small triangle, which corresponds to B plus K. And then I could also say that A corresponds to H. So you have to create the proportions with those sides that correspond with each other. Okay? So one way is you're going to have to separate the triangle. Another way to solve this third way, or second way, excuse me, here, is what we call using the side, the side splitter theorem. The side splitter theorem is like the ladder theorem. Okay? So, in, for example, I know that these sides are parallel. Let's say all I'm going to do is focus on the sides. Okay? So, if I'm on this side, the left side, I can compare the parts. It would be C over M is equal to, 
Yeah, B over K, and we're done. So if I'm just, if all I'm looking at is trying to find the sides, the outsides, the left and the right, then I could just split up the sides, do the side splitter. Are we okay on that part? Okay, now, the third way is if, let's say, what if you're finally, what if you're looking for what we call the parallel sides, okay? If you're looking for the parallel side, um, you have to separate the triangles and then compare the sides. All right, so, yeah, separate the triangles, compare the sides. So I'm going to go back to what I was saying. You know how we have the small triangle, right? Okay. Let's say I want to find the side that's parallel to A and B, right? Because A and B are the parallel sides. So if I'm comparing A, not A to B, I'm sorry, A to H, then all I need to do is find another side in the small triangle, okay? Give me another side in the small triangle. B, okay, B is on the right side of the small triangle. <coughs> so now I have to compare that B to the, to the whole side in the large triangle. D plus K I could do, or AE, because that is that length, or it's another length, S, or I could use S, and that's what they're trying to show you here. They're showing you they, they already measured that whole side. So I could say the parallel side A is to H would be corresponding to B is to S, okay? Or if I wanted to, I could also let's say A is to H and go to the other side, to the left side. If I was looking at the left side of the small triangle, yeah, C to R, okay? So all we're really doing is kind of separating them or using the side splitter based on what's given. All right, do we have that down? All right, so I'm going to focus on odds and the types that are going to be test-like. So number 19, they're comparing AB to BC, and they say that the ratio, and I'm just going to rewrite it, AB over BC is the ratio 3 to 4, okay? It is three to four. So they want us to use that ratio to problem solve and find um, and solve the proportion. Do you have a proportion, Kosi? Uh, yeah, but what did you do before that? You're right. Oh, uh, AB is 60 on the top. So he put 60 on the top, okay. And, and then, then uh, you that part is Yeah. Yeah, so he just went ahead and made it equal to 3 over 4, and he's gonna go, he went ahead and cross-multiplied. So he saw that that's 240 equals 30Q plus 45, and then you're just solving for Q. So basically, you have to take the ratio, make sure you can write the proportion with those corresponding parts. Are we okay on that? I think it's 6.5. All right, 21. 21 is a test-like question. You're definitely going to see that on the quiz and on your test. So then a triangle, the ratio of the measures of the three angles is 2 to 5 to 8. Find the measure of each angle in a triangle. What do we know about this type of problem? You're on the right track. What do we know about this type of problem? What do, what's the key information? Well, no, there's no size given. Three angles. They have that ratio. So what do you know about three angles? Of a, they equal 180. So basically, I'm just going to take this ratio. I'm going to make it algebraic and just say 2x plus 5x plus 8x equals 180. And then now I can just solve for x and then plug it in to get my angle measurement. Yes, 15x equals 180. So x equals 12. 
Alright, so now I gotta do is find my angles. So one of them's 24. 5 times 12 is 60. And then 8 and 12, 96. And those are three angles. Okay. Now, move to number 27. All right, 27 goes with this picture to the right, okay? So I'm gonna, we're going to label it first, and then we're going to have to figure out which way of our three ways can we solve it. They tell me AN is 4, so I'm going to label that. YN is 8, AC is 12, and they want us to find ND. We're going to have to separate the triangles. Does everyone see that now? Because we're looking at the parallel sides. Since we have to look at the parallel sides. So A, C would equal four of those X. Yes. Oh, that's so good, Kosi. Eight. Um, A, D is four plus X. Because most I've been hearing people say four X. No, you got to add the two parts. Remember we were talking about that? When you separate the triangle, you have to add them up. So that's going to be 4 plus x, and then this will be 8 and x. So now we're just going to write a proportion to those parts that go together. So the parallel parts that go together are 8 and 12, small to big. 8 to 12 would be equal to, what would be the other two parts? Yeah, x over x plus 4. And now we have our proportion, and now you have to cross multiply to solve it. Are we okay on that? Okay. So, with that being said, a lot of it is being able to look at the picture and know which method, which way to solve it. So, uh, let's see. This answer was... Yeah, x equals 8. Yep, that's right. x equals 8, yeah. What? And D is... And D is X, so it's 8, yeah. Okay. All right, so let's look at, look at 31 and 32, okay? All right, so on 31 of your three ways, are you going to have to separate it? Are you going to have to use side splitter? Are you going to have to look at the parallel sides? On 31, which one do you think it is? Mm-mm. Yeah, this one, look, if they only give you the sides, and they don't, if they don't use the parallel, then we're looking at side splitter. So I just got to split the sides up. So my ratio would be x plus 20 over x plus 8 equals yep, 18 over 10. Okay. Now, on 32, which way would you use it? Because there's two ways, but which way could you use it? You could use side splitter again. What would you need to do? Yeah, you would take that 30 minus 9, so we know that part is 21. And now we have side splitter again. So this would be x plus 6 is to x, as 21 is to 9. Okay, and now we have our proportions. The key to this is determining the correct way to set it up. Okay. Which one? There are two with side splitter again. Yeah. It's parallel side whenever they give you the parallel sides. Okay. Huh. Oh, you can do it either way. As long as you split up those parts. Okay. All right, so what about 33? What would you use on that one? Ladder theorem for 33, okay? 34, what would you use on this one? Uh, yeah, triangle, angle, bisector. Okay, so let me, let me show you this, the parts. The 12 would go with which part? It would go with the x because they're on the same they're on the same side of the of the bisector. Okay. Now, if this whole side is 20, 
what would this missing part here be? Yeah, 20 minus x, okay? So basically, 12 to x equals 18 to 20 minus x. Are we okay on that? No, ma'am? All right, evens, evens, evens. Oh.